And one of the team members ho hollered out, it's like, oh, my God, look at this. So everybody come running and just as clear and as pretty as could be, it's a 21-inch track. Today's guest comes to us live from the great state of Georgia, Mr. Tony Green. Mr. Green began researching Bigfoot and cryptids in North Georgia in 1989. He's since had a sighting of his own and has been on dozens of cryptid and Bigfoot research expeditions. You are, of course, watching the Caffeinated Cryptid Podcast. I am your host, Bobby Dizzle. I invite everyone to subscribe and all ways to watch and listen is, of course, in the description. I want to do things a little bit different this week. Um, I want to dedicate this show to the memory of Mr. Bob Grumpy Wilson, a legend in the cryptid and Bigfoot world, passed away last week. Many of the people I've come to know by doing this podcast were very close to him, loved him deeply, really respected him, and just spoke nothing but kind words to him. I only met him for a couple of days on a uh, Bigfoot expedition camp out research gathering a few months ago. Um, but the time I spent with him was awesome. You could tell there was uh, a larger than life presence around him talking to him that he was very intelligent, knowing in all of his, I say knowing, very intelligent and knew what he was talking about. Like there was real experience in his words. And you could tell you were talking to somebody that had been through there and paid his dues and really earned the respect everyone was giving him. Just trying not to ramble here, but I just want to pay my respects to a man who I feel has earned the respect from others. And uh, just want to say rest in peace, uh, Mr. Wilson. You were loved and respected and you'll be missed by many. <laughs> Tony, um, conversation has officially started. Here we go. That's a third wall breaking at its best. So let's <laughs> let's get your let's get your quick intro out of the way. Um, you started researching in 1989 with the Georgia Bigfoot research, and right. you had an experience prior to that or afterwards. It was it was during that time I was researching with the group. Okay, there was, there, was there were two two there was actually two experiences uh, at that time. When re researching with the group, as far as, you know, actively mm -hmm. seeing one, a personal encounter, so to speak, with with a with a visual, you know, we've had during that time we had, uh, you know, them coming around camp, circling the camp, throwing logs in camp, uh, throwing rocks and stuff, you know, things like that. And, you know, there'd be times where you literally couldn't go to sleep at night. And then there'd be times where nothing would happen at all. What was the region that happened? Was that like North Blue Ridge area? The region that you're uh, experienced. The region. Oh, the region. That, yeah. Oh, uh, that's North Georgia, yeah. up above Rome, in be in between Rome and uh, Somerville. Okay, yeah, I know place, exactly where that is. That place called Jenkins Gap. That's what mm -hmm. it was called. That little area. I came through there going to, uh, what's it called? Medieval times. You know. Uh huh. <laughs> About last year. And, you know, I'm from North Alabama where the, I'm from the county that Alabama and Tennessee and Georgia all meet. Okay. And so, and my uncle's, my uncle lived in Rome. So I've been over there and I came through there at, I left at four o'clock in the morning from Huntsville and just going across the mountain there at Fort Payne. And it was like, yeah. it was like another, it's like another country for like, like a hundred miles. Yeah, it is. It's, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful. And for, I think I, I think the last time I went up there, as far as on the research level, was maybe mm -hmm. 2011, 2012. And, you know, how we did it was we didn't have the night vision. We didn't have a lot of this technology until later on into our research. A lot of it was just flashlights. That's all we had, flashlights <laughs> and pistols for protection. And <laughs> bare, bare minimum. That's it. That was that was it. And what we discovered, you know, over time was eight different creatures living up there. Mm -hmm. You had, uh, I think, yeah, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we we uncovered four, four or five different size tracks. Um, now, how we come up with the with the number eight was. Some some of those tracks were like if it was 13 inches, the other one was like maybe 13 and a half, you know, um, 
very small differences with them. And yeah. so we, we, we deduce from that, that, you know, there's probably at least eight creatures up here. You had, you had your, your, your dominant male and you had your female, but there seemed to be a, a larger, older male creature mm-hmm. that was, that was there also that like, he kind of, it seemed like, it, it seemed like he hung around in the back in like in, in the shadows where we got that from was and this is going to sound crazy but it was the only time that we've ever seen it and we did not have enough plaster of paris to pour it but there was a 21 inch track that we found wow that was pretty much like close to current camp just outside the light radius of the camp we had set up and it was right next to a tree that we used to go to the bathroom and where we found it, you know, we wasn't, we, you know, after we were packing up and leaving. You know, who's thinking about looking <laughs> for a track next to your car? You know, yeah. And we were we were packing up, leaving, and one of the team members ho- hollered out, "It's like, oh my God, look at this!" So everybody come running because we thought something was wrong, and just as clear and as pretty as could be. It's a 21 inch track. Now I wear a size, I wear a size 15. That's gonna say and what does Shaq wear? Shaq wears a 22. I mean, that's so that's huge. That's huge. And you know, the just the, it, it was it was just li- just literally unbelievable. So we're hauling for the plaster of Paris, and we had used the, all that we had pouring. Like a fork, it was a 14 inch track we were pouring, and that was the last that we had of it, so mm-hmm. we, we never got a chance to pour that. And, and at the time, we did not have I don't think at that time there was no you didn't have cell yeah. phones like you got now, so it ain't like you could just snap a picture of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that was right before right before the advent of the eight megapixel camera. Yeah, phone. You, had, you had that stupid little one, yeah, yeah, square, square, yep. Yep. Did you do like a, a um, what's the word, diffusiary object next to it with like a stick in it and like a width? I, like put take a stick in, and... I, I put my foot in it. That's, that was yeah. about it. I, you know, because, you know, it was known that I that I wore at that at that time. I wore mm-hmm. a size 14, some 14, 14 and a half or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I, I was able because I had the biggest foot there. So I, you know, I put my foot in it and, and, you know, you still had like one or two, three inches on either side of me. Yeah. It was insane. Can you imagine the animal that had that or the thing? No, the person? no. Cause it, it's, it, it, it literally terrified us. Cause like I said, we were going back. That's where, that's where the men of the group would go back there and take a leak. Cause it was behind the car, just mm-hmm. outside the light radius and away from camp. So that's where we would go to take a leak. So there's no telling because, you know, we couldn't tell if it was if, you know, it wasn't there when we parked there. But we don't know, like, for example, if this thing was standing there when we were taking a leak, you know, or or, you know, what? Because yeah. if we'd have been back there, if it had moved, you know, we'd have seen it. But if this thing being as big as it was in the dark. We would have thought no more is a tree because, you know, we didn't have mm-hmm. night vision or nothing. And we're just going back to using the bathroom. We're not expecting anything, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and when you go, like I've been on, I've been in this t- situation before many times, the campfire to the quote unquote restroom. Right. It's usually, usually it's not enough time for your pupils to adjust either. Right. It's right. Like you're basically blind the whole time you're back there. You're just like, okay, 10 seconds and you're gone. So yeah, he could have been there yeah. doing this. Just sitting there. Man, yeah. That is Just terrifying. I know, I know the feeling. <laughs> and 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 what I'm thinking is it, it's 15 feet tall, is like the plus or minus what it might be. Yeah. And so you would look, you look this eye level, you know. You're not you're seeing nothing, nothing <laughs> but girth. It looks yeah. like a, it would look like a just a large tree. You know, you you you're not think because you you're you're you know from the camp <laughs> to where that was, it's not like on pick up the hair. 
unless no. it moves or something. But if it's just standing still, you're going to the bathroom. You're not thinking that this something's that close to you. <laughs> you know, that, that would thinking. be something else. You walk back there like, damn, did you take a shit back there or something? Smells <laughs> <laughs> so <it's> like a skunk. <laughs> like a skunk spray back there or something. And yeah, it's pretty, we, and it was just one, just one track. Just, out, just one track. And that's, that's another thing that, you know, um, I think a lot of theories develop because of, you know, you find one track and you don't yeah. find any others or you'll find a trail. Then it like just vanishes. For me, I, I don't it's to me. It's just I just keep it a mystery. I, I'll say I don't know what happens. You know, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't I don't like. I'm not too much a fan of speculation, of speculating, you know, to the point where it, it, it gets it gets off into other areas, you know. Yeah, it turns, it I, turns I, into I, a uh, smoke circle. Yeah, yeah. So I just, I kind of like, you know, I don't know. I Yeah, it happens. Um, but from what I've seen of these creatures, I don't see any other thing other than a bipedal primate. Mm -hmm. You know, slight, slightly, I will say more intelligent than an ape, not quite as intelligent as a human. For the simple fact, it doesn't make any tools. It's not going to start a fire. It's not going to build anything other than what a bed that animals normally would build. You know, I mean, eagles build nests, you know, deer bed down. And so these things appear to me what they'll do is they'll they'll build a nest for them to sleep in. They they hunt uh, shelter like caves or they'll mm -hmm. build like what we would call a lean tune to kind of stay out of the weather, the elements, you know, and, and they keep moving. I, I believe they're, they're they're creatures that are on the move. And that's why you may see them at one time a year, but you won't see them all year to that time, the same time next year. Mm -hmm. but, somebody um, somebody well, compared them. Oh, go, go ahead. Sorry. I was trying to think. Go ahead, you're good. You're good. Well, somebody compared them to a, uh, they did like a, like a dog hunt kind of thing. As far as natural resources go, where you just go in a line around right. and uh, kind of like a locust, like, Loosely like locusts would do, just take over what they can and just move around nomadically in the area. Right, right. And and if they find, I, I, do, I do believe this, if they find an area that that will um, sustain them for a long period of time, mm -hmm. they will remain in that area for that for a long period of time until they have to move out again. I, I do believe that. You know, the, the first... You know, most people for, for me during during since I've been researching, you know, most people get started with a they'll have a sighting and then that will spur their research. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, it was how I got into it was I worked at a convenience store and I worked third shift. And I would have, you know, uh, some of my buddies would come in and hang out with me at night. And we would talk about ghost stories, Bigfoot. I've always, I've always believed in Bigfoot. I never had an issue believing in Sasquatch. You know, my favorite two movies is The Legend of Boggy Creek and The Creature from Black Lake. Mm -hmm. Of the two, The Creature from Black Lake, I believe, is my favorite of the two. And I know a lot of people will disagree with me on that, but this... I love the the way the creature from Black Lake was done. So I've always had a belief in Bigfoot. I've never seen him as alien or uh, supernatural or anything like yeah. that. I just figured there's a bipedal ape out here that ain't been caught. Shape so that, and that's yeah, you got there's all kinds of stuff. So that that was that was my thing and you know we would sit up and talk about this all the time talk about you know at night and everything and one of my buddies said he goes i know a guy that does research on it. i was like really he's like can he is it okay for him to come up here i was like yeah absolutely bring him up here so and and the the, the team at the time was called georgia bigfoot research and investigation and he brought him up there and 
we got to talking and everything. And he goes, he, you know, his name was Jan Allen. They, mm-hmm. the, this team was under Jan and Lamar Allen. And he said, uh, would you like to go with us? I was like, nope. It's like, I don't, I don't have to prove anything. <laughs> he said, nope. <laughs> I said, nope. And there were, there were, there were two other guys that were all gung ho about going They, You know, they were, yeah, we'll go and everything. Cause they had a, at this time, this was, this was around April or May. And they were, they had planned a trip in October and the other two dudes were saying they were going to go. Well, over time, I was, I, you know, I've been coming around. They have been coming around. They've been showing me different stuff, like the, you know, like footprints, and pictures, and and the Patterson footage, mm-hmm. and different different analysis of the Patterson footage, and it was intriguing me. And I decided that I was going to go if the other two dudes went. But come the, they never went. And I've been doing it ever since. They never went. What are they doing and now? I don't know what they're doing. They they they're they're not doing. They ain't doing anything with it. <laughs> they ain't doing anything. They just and let you go out there by yourself. Yeah, I just it was just you know because I'm I'm with this group and they were supposed to, you know they were all gung ho about it, but they never never they didn't go not one time, not one single time. <laughs> and and I went and. I almost got ate up by a mountain lion, a tiger, a, a, a big cat come charging at me. Mm-hmm. They had to, they had to shoo it away. That's, that started me into, I'm going up here with a gun because I don't want to get eaten by anything. Yeah. But Step I move. think it was my third trip up there that where I saw my first footprint. And when I saw my first footprint, I had the reaction like, if I had seen the creature face to face, yes, it was, it was, it was like, it went from the page to reality in front of me. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd like, so I didn't have trouble believing it, but that belief became a reality when I seen that footprint. And I, I just, I sat there and I mean, I, I stared at it probably for a good 15, 20 minutes, just staring at it. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm like, I'm real. I'm taking it all in. You know, my mind is like, I'm actually seeing this. It was like a good and, one, like in, in dirt. Yeah, it was, it wasn't in, it was, it, how I put it, you know how you got a trail going, just a, mm-hmm. like going through the woods, you got a, a pad, padded down trail, almost like a mm-hmm. game trail, but it was just like a, a, just a beautiful, you saw, you got the toes. It was probably maybe two inches in the ground. It was a 13 inch track. Mm-hmm. A lot of, uh, on, it's like the most tracks that, that I've seen up there were mainly 13 inch. What I mean by the most is that was the most common that we saw. You know, we would see mm-hmm. randomly a 15, uh, like I said, a 14, that 21. But mainly, it was always 13, 13 and a half. It's like the same so, size, same maybe the same one back and forth, too. Yeah, yeah. Cause, all right, so and to, to back up to go forward, their first, like, bef- like they had been there, been up there maybe three or four times before I actually went. They got a call from the Georgia Forestry Commission at the time because – one of the people that lived up there had a sighting and it rattled him enough to where he called the sheriff's department. The sheriff's department then called the Georgia forestry commission and then the Georgia forestry commission called the, 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 the Bigfoot research team. And there was what, what, what the guy described was a crippled creature. It seemed like it, it hmm. was like paralyzed on one side or something. Cause it, it, it walked and it drug its foot behind it. Mm-hmm. And how what, what he was doing was he was up there picking ginseng. It was him and his friend was supposed to go up there picking to pick ginseng. And these, and these are older mountain men type. Yeah, especially and, they're picking ginseng. It's only yeah, person. they're they're picking ginseng. And as he was going up there to he was going to go, but his friend had got sick. So he said, you know, I'm gonna hang back and I'll be up there in a little while. So the other guy went up there by himself and he's, you know, picking his ginseng 
And he said after about an hour or two goes by, he saw some movement off out to the corner of his of his eye. So he assumed that was his friend coming up there. So he hollers to him, hey, I'm over here. And he said, now, from the time he saw that movement, I guess 30 or 40 minutes had went by. And he's like, you know, his, he should already been here by now. And after he had that thought, he said the, the hairs on the back of his neck stood up. And mm. when, when he looked, this creature was standing there looking at it. And he said his knees locked. And the creature stood there for a minute, grunted at him, turned and like limped off up like it just limped off like it had like it was paralyzed or injured or something. And that's and that's how we that's how the team got up there. And, you know, the guy, of course, he called the sheriff's department. The sheriff's department called the Forestry Commission and the Forestry Commission called our team. And the, a relationship was built to where, and this was this was early. Now it changed after probably after about ten years of going up there. But when we started going up there, they would shut that mountain down when we were up there. They would shut it down to hunters, hmm. to anybody going up there, because you had to have a gate, a, a key to get through the gates. Hmm. And we would we would have to call the Georgia Forestry Commission. Hmm and the sheriff's department to let them know we're coming up there to research and they would shut the mountain down they would give us the key so we had to go pick up the key to get up to the mountain and we would have that whole mountain to ourselves for the weekend to to research and it's it's changed since then though mm -hmm. but i've been looking yep. for uh forest rangers and people like that to come on and I haven't, I haven't decided my strategy yet because I know they know some things. Mm -hmm. but I know they can't. I know they can't exactly flat out say it. I had uh, Robert Leiterman on. You may have heard of him, the Bluff Creek guy, Bluff Creek Project. Yeah, he's the one that found the original Patty site. And he was a forest ranger, but he didn't have oh, any. Wow. Yeah, he, he was a forest ranger out there in Bluff Creek. But he said that they anytime they'd have like something happen, they would call him. But it wouldn't be like I asked him, was there a secret code like? They say like, "Hey, Robert, we got a flying squirrel or something on the loose up here." <laughs> like, but like what you just said, I'd love to hear those stories, like the behind the scenes yeah. that the forest rangers had to hear. The, the one thing, the the one thing is that 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 helped us a lot. Really, was building the relationship with them. You know, um, mm -hmm. being you know one, you know being professional, building that relationship, getting that repertoire. Cause it took years. It took a couple of years to build that to where they, mm -hmm. they bypassed the sheriff's department and would just call us, you know, and it, it, it took, it took years to, to, to build that relationship. Was there ever After, anything like, was, is there anything like they, like a disclosure agreement you had to sign or like there was like an understood, you don't mention this. No, at, 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 now there may be now, but yeah. at that time you're talking, this was like, early to mid nineties. Yeah. Uh, there, there was nothing like that. There was, there was nothing, mm -hmm. you know, now, now with our team, what we would do, you know, we'd have like a normal application, you know, for, with your information that we would keep and put that in a particular safe, but like, like a non-disclosure agreement, you know, we wouldn't give up the location and yeah. pretty much like the same today. But now, you know, I I would I, I don't I feel comfortable giving up the location because now you the whole area is like hikers and mm -hmm. horses and stuff and you know people are up there all the time. It's a, it's a popular hiking area. Yeah, which which tells me that I don't think those creatures are still there anymore. You know that they they have, they have possibly moved on, or people aren't saying anything. I was meaning like with the uh, forestry department, like the park rangers, like did, did they have something like, well, we'll call you guys and this happens, but don't, don't mention it. That it was no, uh, there was no, there was none of that. There was, there was none of that. And there, like there's other, all right, so there's that ridge. And then there's also, um, a, I think it's called dirt cellar mountain mm -hmm. where there was rumors of don't get caught after dark on dirt cellar. 
So you had you had rumors like that going on. Yeah. But we were never was we never was able to get over on to Dirt Cellar Mountain. Because we believe that they were coming from that area to Taylor's Ridge. But we wasn't we wasn't able to get on on that particular mountain. And that'd be you know, it's one of those things that if it has a rumor like that, something had to have happened. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. What's that? What's that now, place everybody always talks about? Monster Central in Louisiana or whatever? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it didn't come from that, that. That's a man. That's a given. There's something there. There's something there. Yeah, that's that's a given. It's incredibly curious. I mean, you, it makes you wonder, like when you, what you were saying about how they may not be there anymore, and with the caves, the. Uh, like I think that's one of the biggest clues to the whole mystery is the cave system. Yeah. How there's nothing, yeah. nothing in the middle, nothing's in Nebraska, but you know, you got your Rockies and where we're at, basically I me and you are pretty much in the same spot. Right. So, as the, as the crow flies, but there's nothing in the center. So that, that kind of, that's a huge clue for me. Yeah. And you don't, and you don't really get any kind of sightings coming. You, if they, if you do, they're very rare, few and far between coming out of the middle of the United States. Mm -hmm. Yep. They all hide, now, my, hide in the grass. Right, right. <laughs> now, and my first my first sighting happened uh probably six years in. Because at that time, what we would do is one of our strategies was like I said, we didn't have night vision. We didn't all we had was pretty much our flashlights. So one of the things we would do is in during the day, we would go out. In two and teams of two spread out through the mountain and just go out, you know, looking for signs that they were there, footprints, tree structures, hair if possible. But we would talk and make noise, you know, casual conversation and stuff. And then around five or six o'clock, we would start heading back to camp and we would wait for them because. What, what these creatures would do there is they would come to you. You didn't have to go to them. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times at night we would, they would come to the camp and literally circle the camp and you, you, you hear them. They, they'll make, they'll, as they're circling, you hear them get closer and closer and closer. And at one instance, we, we was like, let's see if they come into the light. So, we we ignored them for the most part, you know. As they're as mm -hmm. this, like I said, this is they did this all that this was a normal routine for them to come in, circle the camp, circle, the, and they'll get closer, but they would never come into the light. So this particular time, we was like, that's because when they were circled, you know, you'd pe people looking, and then we would kind of get up and go out to where we've heard them at to try to see if we can capture one or get some eye shine or something, and so we would go out to where they were. So this particular time, we decided to not do nothing and just sit in camp and listen to them and talk. And we had done that and we're talking and then it just gets deathly quiet. And then a rock hit comes in and hits the fire. I was like, what are they doing? So it's like, you know, so we was like, OK, so hold on. They, they're throwing rocks. So hold on. Yep. Let's, let's not let's not do nothing. Let's just keep talking and see what they do. Chief community. Yeah, because they're trying. Because they're, it's like it's almost like they wanted to play or they wanted us to engage with them. Because mm -hmm. the, the more we ignored, the more intense the rock throwing got. And it, at one point, there was a tree. They threw like a tree branch or something into the fire. They, it was always into the fire because if it was on the on the gravel, you're not going to necessarily jump like you would if it's in the fire. You mm -hmm. know. So and they would they would do this and till we got up and we get out and go looking for them in the dark with these flashlights and you would you would catch a shadow going behind a tree you know you would um, hear a grunt here you'd hear them running through the brush and it was almost like they wanted us to chase them and it 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 it, it, it was crazy because it's it's like these creatures knew who we were they knew our routine. And they would respond to us according to what our routine was. You know, on my first sighting, my first sighting, it wasn't like a 
like an like an full facial, but we we were down in this ravine, mm-hmm. and it was me and two other team members. And I just happened to see one just take off. And this is this is like three in the afternoon. This is in broad daylight. It just I seen it like take off. So when I saw it take off, I took off after it. And I'm I mean I'm in a full sprint. <laughs> And I couldn't tell you what happened to my other team members, but I was in a full sprint. And I I, I couldn't tell you how far I chased it. I, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll say probably maybe 200 yards, something like that. Mm-hmm. And it just – I couldn't see it no more. So I, 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 I stopped, and you could <laughs> hear a pin drop in the woods. I bet. You, it was just silence. The wind wasn't blowing. The birds wasn't chirping. Crickets, nothing. The leaves wasn't even moving. I was, and I, I'm in. I'm standing here. I got a single shot shotgun in my hand, and it's got bird shot in it. So you ain't got nothing. Teammates, I didn't have nothing. <laughs> teammates, I don't know where they are. They're gone. So I stopped, and and I'm like, you know, and I said <laughs> this out loud. Okay, I was like, listen, I'm not finna run back to camp. So I'm not going to chase you anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around and I'm going to walk back to camp. If you choose to follow me, that is fine, but I'm not running. And I turned around and I walked slowly back to camp because one, I was, I was dead tired. Yeah. You just did the 800 meters. Yeah. (laughs) And a you, can, you, you can hear them kind of paralleling me. You'd hear them from time to time mm-hmm. until I probably got about 50, 50 feet outside of camp. And then they stopped. And I walked back to walk back to camp. This was still in the daylight. This is like three o'clock. This was broad daylight. This was yeah. broad daylight. This is broad daylight. The second time was probably maybe a year or two later. And this time we wasn't actually all right. So up there, great places to camp. If you just want to go up and just camp, good mm-hmm. places to camp. So I took my uh the time I took my took my ex-wife and my son, my mother-in-law, and father-in-law, we went up there. Like my father-in-law was actually head of the team. So we went up into this area that we call the swamp. And we'll, why we call it the swamp is basically it was at the bottom of the bottom of the of this particular ridge and it had a creek that ran along it and we camp on the side of the creek right there and it's a and it's it was you know it's a there's houses kind of around a little bit but it's a good place to camp good safe place to camp so we were up there camping and my me and my father-in-law we were we were talking we were just loud and laughing and just cutting up and having a good time. And it started getting dark and my ex-wife and my son who was a baby at the time and my mother-in-law, they were, they were going to go to bed. So we decided to walk, me and my father-in-law decided to kind of walk down to the, to the Creek there. Cause it, you had a, you had the Creek and you had a little trail and it would curve down to go onto the Creek as if you were going to cross it. Mm-hmm. And we walked, we were going to walk down to, to that, to that point. And as we get into the curve, I start seeing these, we start seeing these eyes just start doing this number. Mm-hmm. And it's, and I, I, I turned to him, I said, Lamar, what the heck is that? And when I pointed, it came, it, it like came out. It was almost like as we were, we, you know, cause we were still walking. And when it came out, we met each other. And it was like, for some reason, we startled it as it startled us. Cause we wasn't expecting it to come out. You know, we were still questioning what this eye shine was mm-hmm. and it, as it stepped out, it stopped grunted. And when I say grunt, it's like, it almost like this <sighs> and turned and walked off and it went through the brush. And it, at this point it wasn't trying to be quiet. It was like a truck going through there. And we were like, you know, did, did, did we see that? Like, yeah. Do you want to follow it? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, it's just dark. It's going, <laughs> going down to the creek and like we were going to do and see what happens. 
And, you know, we went on down there, but that was the only thing that happened that weekend. That was it. There was no, it didn't come back. As far as we know, it didn't come back. We wasn't, well, we wasn't actually looking for it because, you know, we go up there all the time, but we set up a trip mm -hmm. to go back as a result of that. That swaying thing. A lot of people talk about the swaying thing back and forth. Yeah. Daniel yep. Daniel Benoit talks about that. No, it wasn't Daniel. He talked about the eye shine in the dark. But the guy I talked to last week, the anthropologist, said that both ones he saw were doing that. Swaying, just like they just mm -hmm. I, I don't understand. I don't, I don't know if that's just a animalistic thing. Cause you know, birds do that mess too. They'll start doing their head like that certain mm -hmm. birds do. So, you know, I don't know what that is. You know, you know what it reminds me of? What's that? Um, I was in a marching band and we would do that when we were in this one spot the whole time to keep us from getting keep us from getting uh passing out for our legs locking. Huh. You kind of shift weight. I don't think that that's a Bigfoot what they're doing to sugar they could walk if they wanted to, but like when you were like at attention for a long time, you kind of got right. to do this a little bit and try to lean, get the circulation going and back and forth. Right, right. And I know when I used to deer hunt a lot, I found out a way to always see deer. I would walk in, find a nice tree that was my wit, you know, that I could lean against, kind of take cover against. Uh -huh. I would scrape out, I'd scrape, scrape the leaves out from under it and I would stand up, hunt and kind of lean against the tree. And eventually, every once in a while, I'd have to, I'd sway back and forth. And I'm, Anytime anybody says it, I think of those two situations about huh. how when you're when you're in one spot for a long time, you kind of got to pump it, got to do this. Yeah, because a lot of their swaying, like I've noticed, a lot of their swaying is revolved around trees. Like if they're close to a tree, they'll sway like that. Mm -hmm. But if they're kind of like out in the open, they don't necessarily do that. No, they just, it's more or less when they're when they're around some kind of cover or a tree. Is when they wait when they do that. Now the, the eye shine, that right there is, that's what tells me we're dealing with a living animal because of that eye shine. Humans don't have eye shine, you know. Nope. Dogs, cat, animals have eye shine. You know, in in any anything else. Heck, even insects have eye shine, spiders mm -hmm. and stuff, you know. That's what tells me we're dealing with a living, breathing primate. Now, is, is the eye shine, is eye it, shine, does it happen like a deer? Like when you shine, like a, obviously when you shine a light in their face, you know, you get the light. But does it, yeah. do, it, does it do it like without light shining in their face? Because I've heard that too. Like they just see glowing eyes without light. Now, I can never, I can never get an answer on that. <laughs> Okay, so every instance that I've seen has always yeah. been some kind of light. Okay, if it's yeah. and, and 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 it kind of reflects the the color of the light. Um, like I've I've seen what 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 would, what would appear to be red eye shine, but I'm there there there's a fire there. They're looking towards mm -hmm. a fire, you know. Um, I've I've seen the 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 bright M like the like the bright blue eye shine, but that's directly in the light of a flashlight. You know, I've seen yellow eye shine, yellow eye shine. And you get that from a distance. Like if they're, yeah. if, if, if you're shining your light and it, they're, they're, they're good 25 yards up a ways, you'll, you'll see like, it'll look, it'll look yellowish, but like without no light, I've, I've not, I can't say I've seen none without no light. Yeah. I've heard people compare it to like uh, the driveway reflectors, like that big around being in the woods. Yeah, yeah. Like I thought, that, thought somebody had one of those uh, trail markers on in the woods, and it wasn't. It moves. Yeah, like trail mark. Now, trail I, mark. I, and there and there's no light reflecting on it. See, I, I see. Mm -hmm. I there's certain certain things that it's done. Um, personally, I haven't encountered. You know. Um, mm -hmm. Every every everything that I've seen them do was a result of. A, you know, something with a light, uh, the campfire, looking at the campfire. Mm -hmm. um, now, what I have not witnessed either, not in, in any instance, have I ever smelled one. Hmm, really? I've I've never smelled one. Because that's all something I've always wanted. I was like, man, 
people are saying they smell it. I've never smelled none. Even, you know, where we go, mm -hmm. I've, I've not smelled it. Now, I have a theory on that, and that is the, the smell is a result of, one, the timing of, of, the, of when you see it. Like, is it in the summertime? You know, mm -hmm. um, swampy areas, areas around water, damp areas, you know, where... If, if it's, you know, if it's like moist or damp, you have that wet dog type smell. Yep. And if that lingers on for a while, it can it can become putrid, you know, but like a dry climate. Yeah. Uh, around wintertime, I, I don't there's I, I wouldn't assume there'd be any kind of smell. It would be a whole lot for it. Wouldn't be a whole lot to, to cause it either. Right. So I, I asked somebody look, one look time. Those things. It, I asked one. I was like, "Do they smell like a squirrel smells?" I don't know if you ever had a squirrel tail or anything. Like it smells a certain way. It smells like woodsy mixed with like a touch of dog, but it doesn't right. stink. Like, you hold it over here, you can't smell it. Like I wonder if that's how Bigfoot smells like naturally. But like if it's in the you swamp know, and stinking, running around, obviously it's going to have more more bacteria growth and whatever right. to cause a smell. Right. And one, one now, one of something that I've concluded, I, I, you know, I've concluded in my research. Now I believe, like now, a lot of stuff has grown, a lot of stuff has come out, um, but I've pretty much divided them up into four different species based on location mm -hmm. here in the United States. You know, you have out there in the Pacific Northwest, they grow bigger. Um, they're I don't want to say aggressive, but they're not necessarily afraid, you know, um, and, and the climate out there is wet. Mm -hmm. So you would they, you would have a natural stronger stench than, say, one here, you know, in, in, in Georgia. And the ones on this side don't get as big. You know, they, they get their average height is around seven to eight. We're out there in California. They're, you know, they're looking at you're looking at ten to thirteen feet tall. Mm -hmm. You know, um, then you have a species down in Louisiana around Boggy, that Boggy Creek creature who has three toes, and it was kind of lanky. You know, um, I think its average height was no more than six to seven feet. There was a and then you one. have the. Yeah, they're not they're not big like the, yeah. the in Florida they're even smaller. In Florida, the Florida skunk ape, he's no I'm bigger than him. Yeah, that, but they're that just humidity and humidity and dampness checks out with the skunk ape. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Smell. No way you're smelling good living in Florida all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't imagine. And now, now you have um and this started um you have the dog man and I've always understood, like, you know, mm -hmm. they're talking about the Sasquatch with a snout. And I you know, I wonder if they get the dog man, if the dog man is the a Bigfoot they're describing. Because what, what I when I think of a Sasquatch with a snout, I think of more like a baboon. Mm -hmm. Has you know, a baboon has a snout. It's not a protruding like a dog, but it has mm -hmm. a snout, you know. And I I've I've always wondered because I've never seen a snouted Sasquatch. So I've kind of wondered if the dog man and the and the snouted Sasquatch are one and the same, or if the dog man is like a a a, a dog or like a werewolf type thing. Get it? Or the 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 goat way, the looks like a baboon with the snout. Yeah, that's a that's like the in between. Okay. I think I think the telltale sign there is the feet, because a good way looks like the uh, the Bigfoot and the feet, and the dog man has like the crazy grasshopper turn backwards. Oh yeah. Thing, thing okay. Going. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah, something that I have. That, that that's, that's something that I don't know if I would want to research that thing. A, a, a dog man. That 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 that's gonna get shot if it comes out and I see something like that. That's that's that that's insane really violent yeah always seems violent and there's a lot of stuff there's there's a there's there's a lot of stuff that seemed to be 
coming out here lately. Because, like I said, when I started doing it, there there wasn't any dog, man. It was just mm-hmm. Sasquatch. Yeah, Sasquatch, Loch Ness Monster, Aliens, um, and what's the other thing? Ghost. That's it. Yeah. Those four. Those four things was was it. Now and you got a yeah, now almost almost everything is blurred. Everything is like coming together. You got Bigfoot, Dogman, werewolves, um, ghost, uh, UFOs, and all of those are intertwined. You know, you really don't hear nothing too much about the Loch Ness monster or anything like that no. anymore. It's it's all like it's all like Sasquatch, Ghost, and Aliens, and all of them are kind of the, the lines are getting blurred, as in this between the distinctions between all three of them. Like Sasquatch come mm-hmm. from Aliens, you know, um, Ghost could have something to do with time manipulations. Just various, a lot of various theories are out there right now. There's a lot of people coming forward too. That's the thing that's happened recently too. Yeah, it's like it's a lot. Uh, you don't get that whole crazy old man in the village um, right. stigma attached to you anymore if you come out with it now. Now it's just oh, you got a story? Come on, people like me out there exposing all right. these little nooks and crannies <laughs> and people that see like one thing like you saw and they don't want to talk about it, but they will talk about it on here. Right, right. There's a, a there's it, a I think. there's a freedom because like all right, so back then when I started doing it, when I started doing it, there wasn't a you were stigmatized. If mm-hmm. you spoke about something crazy like old that. man, yep, yep, and like for me, like I said, we had our we had our discussions, but they were always late at night while I was at at work on a third shift. You know, it, during the day, it wasn't talked about, it wasn't discussed or anything like that. But it was late; it was always a late night discussion that we had, and now those late night discussions that we had back then are commonplace and talked about more and more in detail now more than ever. You talk about them in a professional environment now. Like I'm, yeah. I work in government IT and I'm, I'm in business cash all day and people will come in and they'll see my little sticker on it. Like, oh, what is that? And somebody will mention I got a podcast and they'll start talking about it. Oh yeah, my grandma's house is haunted. You see all kinds of stuff in it. They walk by the door while we were going to the bathroom or something. Like See, yeah, years ago, you would have said that. Uh uh-uh. uh, nope, nope, nope. It's a, it's amazing how how far we've come with the research, with people coming forward, um, and and the quality of the witnesses. Mm-hmm. You know, the quality of the witnesses. You know, that that's that's what's you know bringing it to the forefront. And somebody asked me, you know. And I actually I get this asked quite a bit. How, well, how come how come it's not made to the public yet? How come it's not out there? How come and how come nobody's got a picture? How come there's no evidence? Mm-hmm. I, I tell them, look, I said, a picture does absolutely no good except to the person that took the picture. Mm-hmm. I said, because there have been so many fakes that has that that has come into the Bigfoot field that's almost discredited. The legitimacy of the field and the evidence that we do have i said so i said i believe that the government does have a uh what do you call it a section no, of like the United States. Department. yeah <laughs> that that's dedicated to research and science question i said not only that i said i do believe that when you go into these national forests and you can't do this and you can't do that or you're not allowed in i said these are havens for these creatures to live and to thrive i said when they decide for it to come public they will have everything they need to know about the creature and be able to explain to you what it is before they publicize it or make it known when they randomly close off a part of a giant area right and it's for like a a reason that's not a control burn. Like, right. Right. Closed for a certain part of the year or, you know, Yellowstone has the places you can't go for six, eight months. And Oh yeah. That's yeah. yeah. They got, they got, they, 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 they're, they're holding on. They're doing, they're, I don't <clears> say they're doing stuff. They're, they're, I believe they're really researching these creatures. 
I often wonder if they don't have any um kind of not so much captured or but like having working I guess working with them. I don't know. They, I don't know if capturing one would be how you would do it. I don't know how you'd keep one contained. Well, they they was like for example, that like they they would they know enough about them that okay, so if they if they naturally roam this area of the forest, mm -hmm. we'll make that national forest land where nobody can come in. You see, what I'm saying it's, it's mm -hmm. not like yeah. they're capturing them. They it's not like it's in a zoo. You know, Right, you know, because they, 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 if they can find a person from a satellite, you know, they can find these things and know where they are. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just not publicized. It's just I, not. I've publicized. heard the tales about uh, one of the one of the big forts where they did training exercises at night, and they would always run into them. Yeah, yeah, and they had to had to cancel them a few times. Can you like, imagine that? We're having how they the soldiers. Yeah, well, I'm 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 pretty sure they let them know before they even get to that point. Look, because I um I was watching um what is it called Expedition Bigfoot mm -hmm. with Miranda, and, whatever her name is. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the um uh um Mar Mary Ann, Mary yeah, it's like Mary Ann or. It's like a variation of Marianne, something like that. Yeah, short haired girl. Yeah. Yep. So the guy Bryce, the 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 team leader, he mm -hmm. they showed him he was, he was he was getting gas or something, and a a military vet walked up to him and asked him, "Like, are you the guy from the Expedition Bigfoot show?" And he said he is, and he proceeded to tell him, he said he said you know that he was. A part of a particular military unit doing training in the area that they were that they were investigating and he said his sergeant or his commanding officer told him there are bigfoot he said i don't know what your belief is about bigfoot but they're in the area and when you're training do not engage them that's where that's the same story i just came up with that's where i heard it same dude yeah yep that's yep I just remember that's, that. I'm like, well, I don't know where I heard it, but that is insane. And that tells you right there. Yeah, they 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 got they are aware, they know, and it's nothing to them. So they've known it long enough to where they can have a casual conversation with their men about it. Imagine, imagine that uh hike out there in the land nav land nav oh. practice. <laughs> you know, there's Bigfoot out there. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes yep. I get to I get to thinking like uh, not transcendentally, but like deep thought about how the stories I've heard actually would transcribe to apply in the real world research. I'm like, how would you actually do it? Right. Well, because you know it's intention. They, they say intention based. Don't have a rifle. Don't right. Don't, don't be weird. Like, how would you go about engaging? Like, what what do you do when you go to a new place and start engaging them? You do the you right. cook the That's bacon and start talking. <laughs> That's what a lot of people say they do. They cook bacon and start talking loud. Yeah, because that bacon smells. This smells mm -hmm. good. Can you edit this? Yeah, I can. I got to use the restroom. Oh, yeah. I thought you were about to tell me something cool. Yeah, go. It didn't. <laughs> I said I'll edit. I edit it anyway. Okay. I took advantage of the opportunity myself. <laughs> <laughs> So you can tell when a podcast gets to the restroom break phase that like it's getting good <laughs> because that's when everybody, everybody's kind of everybody's relaxed after that. Just like yeah, yep, yep. I can't believe this already went for fifty minutes. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. I, I mean, I, I I love discussing discussing oh, this stuff. It's so much fun. I, mm -hmm. We had a I got a guy in Minnesota who I'm real good friends with. He was on the new uh, She Squatchers and Jason Humber documentary. Uh huh. Uh, Sasqu uh, searching for Sasquatch Ten in Minnesota. His name's Randy. He's like my first real witness I talked to. And like, really, it was like a paradigm shift by proxy for me. Like, it was like me seeing the foot. Right. Like, <laughs> just, and he said, uh, I was like, how do, how do they look in the face? And he said, hold on a second. I got to, I'll show you. And he got up like you did. And, and I'm like, and I said, what if he has a head? <laughs> and, like, and, he, and he heard me. He goes, I don't have a head. 
But he had a statue. <laughs> he had a statue, and and, he, and his wife said she saw one crouched down in his driveway coming home, just off to the side of the car, and said it looked like that statue you get. Wow. And you know you're in you're in the south, so you know the places that sell the random statues for your garden. Yep. Yep. It was that. Yep. It was that Bigfoot statue that she said it looked like. Wow. The, the weird now, face. Now a buddy, like I said, the 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 the. Uh, the team members, not the team, but the team founders of Georgia Bigfoot Research and Investigation, they, they've since passed away. But they had heads, they had two heads made. And I wish I knew who they gave them to or, or what happened to them. But they had two two heads made and they made them out of, uh, you know, old mannequin heads. Mm -hmm. And they looked... They they would have passed as a good you know it'd been a it'd, it'd be a good illustration like like if you're teaching about Bigfoot and their facial features and stuff that would have been a good they they would have been good props to illustrate that what they look like in the face because the I interesting thing, Ontario has them oh really <laughs> I'm just joking he, oh he had he had, <laughs> those, <laughs> he had those masks because you know. Here's here's the thing. This is something that I, I think is unique to those creatures is they don't they don't look the same in the face. They have every creature has different has different facial features, mm -hmm. similar but different. You know, all and it's and it's just like humans. You know, we 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 all we all are human, but we have different facial features. You know, same bone structure, but different mm -hmm. features of the face. And 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 you know when you look at when everybody has a Sasquatch sighting, you know, some of them will describe a smashed nose, real pronounced lips, uh, thick brow line. And on the other hand, some, you know, will, will describe like higher cheekbones. The lips are not so pronounced. Their, their, their brow line isn't as pronounced. You know, some are narrow faces. Some are fat faces. You know, some are, some are sunk in faces. You know, it's just a variety of appear of what these creatures look like and yeah, they could be subspecies too and mixed in with them you never know yeah yeah because i've heard that you know some look like silverbacks in the face and some look like me and you yeah 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 there's that one group going around and, and it's got to be a hoax because there's no way you're getting that clear picture but it looks like a guy in a three-in-one parka and he's got the giant hood it, it looks like he's wearing a giant black hood with his face painted completely like pronounced black. And, but he's, there's the thing is throwing around whole trees and it's on a pick camera. I'm like, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know who made it, but it looks like, it looks like a dude wearing a three in one parka with a little face in there. I've gotten, I've gotten so many videos. People sending me videos on that. And they're like, is this real? Is this real? real? And, and I'm like, you know, I, I don't know. You know the dude I'm talking about, then. Yeah, where it's it's it's, it's, it's it's like it's like a crime scene. Yeah, from what I heard, yeah. it's a crime scene. Yeah, and this thing, you know the the thing is the trees. He's picking up these trees, mm -hmm. and I'm trying. You know, I'm trying to figure out how 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 would you fake that? You know, if he's picking up the a only tree, thing I can come up big. with is there's some kind of something in the background that helping him lift it right when he does it. I don't know. But it, those it, are big but trees. It, I, those are big and, trees. And, it, and it does look like a dude in like a black ghillie suit, mm -hmm. just a or jet black ghillie suit. And his face—it like it just looks like Phil Robertson with a black <laughs> face paint on. <laughs> but you know, I have I, you know what I what I tell him is, I don't know. You know, I tell him, you know, it could it be? Yes. You know, my question is, you know, I I always ask, why would they? Why would you fake that? You know, I always ask, why would somebody go through the go through the trouble of faking that? Because it's not that's not easy to do. You 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 got you got to put on this whole thing. You got to set your camera up just right. You got to you know fiddle with these trees. You ain't getting paid for it. You know, so <laughs> no, it's like a, so it's why? A <laughs> yeah, well, you know, so it's like why why would you you know why would anybody do that? You know, personally, I. I I think it's real, 
I'm not 100%. I'm 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 about I'm going to say I'm about 80% sure that this is a real footage. 20% that is made up. He effortlessly lifts the size of a tree trunk. This yeah. impressive feat involves just, elevating the 12 inch diameter. I don't diameter, know if I can do this, man. 25 foot long but, log. Uh, it's like a, a jaw dropping 30 feet into the this air. Tree. Followed like, by know, a resounding that's a slam. That's a, the display strength and power exceeds growing. human strength. With the estimated weight of the massive log. And even if it's rotten, it's still heavy. It's still heavy. That's what some people yeah. say. If this trail camera have captured a genuine Bigfoot in action, it's not sure. check it out. Because I've seen this get this same one in another in another shot, uh, completely different shot. Really? Same, dude. Yeah, like this See, is not the first time I've seen this particular person thing. But that's a big like there's nothing holding big, up when he does that. <laughs> that's incredible. So it's it, yeah, so I mean I wonder if I'm allowed to show this. <laughs> well, I mean, it, uh, well, it's been shown. I mean, well, we're commenting times, on it. it you know? matter. Yeah. It's not like we're and it's on, making this and it's on TikTok. So, <laughs> yeah. That's correct. But look at him throw that. If I can find a good shot at him. Five foot long log, a jaw dropping. Like, 30 as far as the way he the looks, air, that, that face. By a it's the first time I've ever seen that particular. I'll get out of here. Tell me. He captures an imposing figure, Can't reminiscent of Bigfoot stature. He effortlessly <laughs> lifts the size of a tree it trunk. This impressive feat involves elevating the 12-inch like diameter, 25-foot-long log, a jaw-dropping 30 feet into anyway. the air, followed by a resounding yeah. slam. See, and, and and another thing about that is it doesn't, it doesn't zoom the in on the face. The weight of a massive log. Like if, hitting if an the impressive actual 530 camera, pounds, the actual footage could from this that trail camera have captured a genuine face, Bigfoot in action? We would be able to see it out. if that's actually its face that we're seeing and not like the side of his head or any other obstruction that may be there giving it the appearance of a hood. Mm -hmm. there's, there's another one that's like a full face of it, that same one, which makes me think it may be just the same, the same hoaxer or whatever, but... yeah. That's the best, clearest picture I've ever seen of something allegedly supposed to be that, other than that weird one in Colorado. I know my, one of my favorite footage footages, so to speak, from from a while back was called the Snow Walker. Slam. The displays, but I've you know since then I've heard that that was hoaxed, and again I just like you know. Why would somebody do that? Have you have you ever heard of the Snowwalker footage? Is that the guy? On, is that the guy on the ridge? Yeah, mm -hmm. where it's, he's 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 walk, it's just walk like walking up uphill through snow. That was filmed by some skiers. I think so. Let me look it up. Snowwalker footage. Yep. I think the uh, Bigfoot wiki. Huh. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. That, next to the Patterson footage, I I think to me that's that, that gives you you know I mean I you kind of see everything with that the muscle the, the what it's doing can't is is humanly impossible you know it does look a lot like Patty there is muscle well yeah I don't know that's in that's a good shot. Yeah, and it, it was taken by some skiers, you know, and that's before, and that was before when you had the 4K cameras and stuff like that. Definitely, definitely before 4K. Mm hmm. Oh, there's a there's a cast. He's got a cast of it. Okay. Yeah. The I didn't realize there was so much like you were saying the pictures that only benefit others out there, only benefit the person yeah. who took them until I talked to the people at the camp out we were on. I didn't know that level of seriousness existed. I didn't really know what I was getting into. And I was like, man, this is next. This is more than I thought. This is more than just people uh, talking about it. There's actual evidence. And the stuff I was showing, I was like, why is this out there? And the reason I was given is what you just said. It doesn't benefit anyone because of all the hoaxers. Like, they're just going to say yep. it's fake. Yep. Yep. It's, 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 it's sad. And it's frustrating. And, and that's one reason why you got like right now, you got Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum mm -hmm. that's kind of stepped in the place of Grover Krantz 
who has given us, you know, that anthropology, that that high level scientific um, backing that's needed in the Bigfoot community. You know, mm -hmm. when 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 they can when they when they can take a track and look at it and go through the anatomy of of this track and give you you know what the muscles are doing what you know the what they call the dermal ridges in it um mm -hmm. how you know this portion of the foot is developed so it can support this amount of weight you know we need we need that scientific you know evidence in the community because that that's what that would that's what undergirds our research you know Without that scientific aspect, that anthropology aspect, we're we're building a deck of cards, a house of cards, because yep. everything is hearsay and theory, and there's nothing concrete to support it. With this, with with this uh, scientific evidence, this sci this um, anthropology uh, that Dr. Jeffrey Mel, Dr. Jeff Meldrum, and Grover Krantz is laying, that's giving us something to build upon. That's exactly how I felt about having the, uh, I say it affectionately, I call them whack jobs, but they're not. They're just people with, with stories. They're, yeah. They're having encounters. That's all they have. That's all any of us mostly have. But I wanted to get somebody with actual boots on the ground and other sciences because I'm trying to build up like credible uh, commonalities amongst it, even if it's not right. directly, direct, even if it doesn't directly apply to it. Like maybe I hear somebody say something about how uh, a wasp builds a nest. I'm like, wait a minute, that could be very comparable. Right, right. You never know. I just think I think I think it's just it's up to us to legitimately uh, try to find some commonality and legitimacy to it without just going out and just talking to somebody that lives on a farm with ten of them. Right, right. You don't have so many of them. Even though they're even, I love those kind of guests, but I, I'm, I can only have so many of them. For I'm just like, I gotta have something else. I gotta talk to somebody. You gotta have some stuff. But there's gotta be some substance. There's got to be some substance, or just just something to something to compare it to to bounce it off of. You know, you gotta right like on uh, Indiana Jones. He finds those artifacts. And he goes, I guess I can walk it through Swahili first, or whatever he says. Or, <laughs> right, you know, the, the hieroglyphics. I can walk it through. Walking through Swahili or whatever he says, like you got to have something to compare it to. Otherwise, you're just out here with every with just, just a fairy tale. Right. Exactly. Exactly. There's got to be something tangible to, mm -hmm. to, like you said, to to be able to bounce it off of. And I think I think the answer's out there. I think the uh, probably somebody already knows. You got the guy from the expedition Bigfoot and the the uh, army guy said he saw him and he had him out there, but we just. I don't know why we can't know any further than we do. I, I think I, I think I think we're closer. I think we do know. I think we how to put it, how, let me figure out how to put this. I believe we know more than what we think we know. And I believe we're we I believe we're closer to the truth than what we think we are. You know, mm -hmm. um cuz there's been a lot of evidence comp compiled the only thing we don't have is a physical body or piece of a body. Mm -hmm. we, 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 have, we have discovered that they move from place to place. We've discovered that there's multiple species of them. We've discovered that, they're, that they travel in family groups. We discovered that they're very uh, secretive, but very observant. You know, um, we discovered some of their eating habits. Um, what else? Weight, height, um, their their adaptability to their environment. So we can be anywhere. That's crazy. They That's can the crazy be anywhere. Part. And we we've discovered quite a bit information about them. You know, um, we 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 know that. They're they're not tool makers, you know. We we know that they're they you know they don't know fire, but their 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 intelligence level, um, with their intelligence level, they can be taught how. They we know that they have a language, and they can communicate through a mm -hmm. language versus just grunting and carrying on. Um, we know that they 
they they use trees or tree structures to identify point in a direction you know territory you know pretty much the same things a a primate will do do, mm -hmm. do with tree structures so there's things we know you know there's things that you know a lot of stuff is i think i think we kind of cancel out what we do know by applying the theories to what we don't and speculation and calling it fact you know, I, I believe we 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 in in the Bigfoot community we we stumble into into that trap of, you know. My theory is fact. Your theory is just a theory type stuff. Yep. The egos, know? man. And we we you know we can't we can't do that because we got to we if if we don't have a solid fact then it, it's just a theory. That's just how it is, and we need to be willing to, you know, discuss each other's theory and and be able to argue but not in the point of debating but just having that discussion on okay so what's your theory and you you explain your theory okay so here's my theory so what like you said what are the commonalities in this theory that we can mm -hmm. go forth you know with you know i call it's it the just serious matter. side of anecdotal yeah that's what i call it, the serious side of anecdotal i said can we just research it on that <laughs> like, like is is there a murder board like a basement wall we can put all this stuff down and like like okay, it might do this when a crow flies by, you know. Right. Anything. Sixty-two degrees outside, they do this. Right. Be a common so I mean, yeah. we you know we we are we're as far as the Bigfoot community goes, we there's a lot of information that we do have, and I believe this: if we come together as a as a community and just lay our cards on the table. This is what we found. This is what, you know, we got, cause there's a lot of, it's, it's almost like a competition. It is. You know? It's awful. Uh, I've, I'm not even know, in I, the Bigfoot community. I, 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 I'm just a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> they hate me. They get on my ass all the time. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a lot of competition. And, and, and I think that competition is a deterrent to the reality of searching this creature because we we are you know we may be studying a what's what we call a myth what's called a mythical creature by you know those who are not in the community mm -hmm. but we're studying a live animal that's walking the the united states and, and and other parts of the world you know and if we come together and say okay look let's share information let's discuss things that we can do to possibly capture one you know pull our resources together to capture one or to enhance our research in a in a particular area and build from that you know we we would i think we would actually prove its existence without um any any anything outside of the community yeah why hasn't there been a brandon fogel fugel whatever his name was from skinwalker ranch about this like a multi-millionaire to put like a 10 million dollars to the research yeah. and what here's the, I, right there there's been like i said there's been a lot of people that have sp spent their life their livelihoods researching this creature yeah. and have gone broke you know um I, I i don't have an answer for that i'm sure there's one out there and you know he's possibly waiting or d just don't know but i'm sure there's one out there that's probably as we speak or is building a team to do mm -hmm. just that. I mean, we got expedition Bigfoot and they've come up with some really good evidence on that mm -hmm. show, you know? So, and then, you know, that's funded by, I'm assuming the networks. Yeah. So, but they can only find certain types of stuff. Well, if, here's the thing. They can, they can talk, only, talk about it. Anyway. Exactly. They can only air certain things. I'm pretty sure they found more than what they've yeah. aired. Like the know? blue forum or the BFRO. Yeah, they don't put on the website. I found out about yep. that from Carter Brushart, and I was like, "What? Well, that's the good stuff. That's the juicy yeah. stuff. Why isn't that out there?" There's a lot of stuff that they just it's if you're if it's getting funded by anything connected to media or government, there's going to it's, it's limited as to what they will allow the public to air. Yeah, see, because I'm I'm on board with there being maybe something 
uh, wooey out there that might be happening because we don't know. I mean, all right. like you said, everything's on the table, and there's definitely been some uh, incidents mm -hmm. with the, the mind mess up and the electronics and the time. But no one ever looks into it. They only look into the gorilla thing, and that's only right. like a piece of it. I mean, they could be. I don't know. I'm trying not to be wooey because I don't want to. I'm trying to get away from it because I really enjoy it, and I. It's like a, <laughs> it's like a eating all the Halloween candy. Right, <laughs> right. Because I get I get to get on that main route. I can go all the way down because I love it. It's just a cinematic universe to me. But I don't want to be the all in on it. But maybe like a little piece of it's real, possibly. I mean, who's to say it's not that they can clip in and out? Maybe some kind of uh, vibration makes them invisible, like a, yeah, like a octopus does. Yeah, like just throwing stuff out there. Like I've heard that maybe the tree knocks are echolocation. That's kind of I see. My, one of my favorite ones. <laughs> and and that's a that's a new one on me. I, I haven't heard that one. That's yeah. interesting. I've had you a know. couple of people, DA Roberts, uh his his bunch was talking about how instead of it being a tree knock, it's a like a bat. Right. Because now if you when you if you think about it and you listen to them, they sound more like that, like you just did, than an actual taking wood and busting it against a tree. Cause you can like they, now they do use tree knocks and you can tell when the piece of wood smacking another piece of wood, but mm -hmm. then you have that crisp, clear knock that you just did, you know? So sounds like a minor league baseball game going on. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. I've, I haven't heard any, I've never, you've been, you know, every minute by minute of all the Bigfoot research I've ever done. Cause you were there for all of it, but <laughs> Um, I've never heard any of it in a while, so I'm just interested in if I get out there, being that I grew up in the woods, if I hear a new sound I never heard before, I'm waiting on that. Like yeah, holy crap, yeah. I've never heard that <laughs> all of my years. That's what I can't. Well, I mean, the, the thing is, you know, just really getting out there, um, keeping an open mind. Oh yeah, uh, good intentions. But, but yeah, but all, but also with keeping an open mind, you want to keep a skeptical mind. You know, you, you you know, you want to say, okay, what what else could this be other than what I'm wanting it to be? You know, and when you run out of all the options of what it could be, you know, then it's like, okay, this really happened, you know, and you chalk it up as as this is an experience. All right, so the 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 I want to say the instinct instinctful thing to do is to tell somebody this is what happened da, 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 da. however if 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 you're seeking to let's say solidify your belief in it don't tell nobody yet but go back to that location again you know at a later time and kind of just sit and listen see what happens you know because that's a lot of times how research is I've had encounters, but I've been at that. We've been going to that place for, let's see, 20 something years. So I've had about three, three or four personal encounters, two sightings, but things happening immediate in my immediate, you know, surroundings about three or four times. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I just went up there and it was just a camping trip. More often than not, when went up there, it's just a camping trip, you know. But then when stuff did happen, it it happened. I know when my electronics started messing up randomly, I was freaking out a little bit. I was like, "What is this crap? Why this stuff never breaks? I've had it for years. All of a sudden, here, nothing's working right." See, I kind of I kind of just giggled to myself and just kept going. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, that's what you do. I get mad. I'm like, look, turn it back on. Whatever yeah. you, whoever you did, turn it back. Leave my stuff alone. I ain't messing Man, with you yet. I was trying to watch, like, I think it was Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives on my phone on Netflix just to go to sleep. And my, everything stopped working. I'm like, what the? <laughs> 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 like, I, I tell you about what happened that night. You know, I had an air mattress incident. I call it air mattress incident of 23. And <laughs> I woke up and I had my toboggan on my head. And I had longer hair than I do now, but I still had the whiskers. And I would breathe. 
And as I breathed, my toboggan was moving on my hair. But my ears were hearing a footstep every time I breathed because it was. Oh, my God. It was 3.33 in the damn morning when it happened. And so I start coming to terms with it. I said, okay, they, they don't kill folks usually. I don't think so. I said, this is about to happen. I said, this is about to happen. I'm like, I'd hear, shh, shh, just at the rate of a breath. And it turns out it was, I, and I, I did this and I heard it like real bad. I said, oh, it's my toboggan. And I got really relieved, but disappointed at the same time. I was like, hey. But the kicker, right before I moved my head and heard it and like, and figured out what it really was, uh, Lee Manette, Glenn's cousin, gr- uh, snored really loud. <laughs> oh man <laughs> dude i had about a 35 second heart attack i was like this is happening i said this is freaking happening because <laughs> i heard Ch-. oh man Ch-. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's when, I, that's when i went and got in the truck i've, I've since spent a thousand dollars on camping equipment i'm ready to go now oh man I gotta get some. I gotta get some more. I, all I got, I got this eight man tent, and I, I, it's, it's, it's a beast trying to put that thing up. And it's like, man, I need to get something more smaller, something. I got me a gazelle that just pops up. Oh yeah, see, I need something like that. Yeah, isn't that expensive? Three hundred bucks. I mean, that's expensive. Yeah, that ain't bad. Well, that ain't too bad because they get there's some. It's just it gets it gets it gets up there. I was unaware. I really want an RV, but that's coming. Yeah, that's camp. That well, that's for at my age now. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to. It's just like I'm starting to lean that way. Yeah, and my wife wants one too, and so that's the that's the main political lobby. Yeah, there you go for the for the, for the kids. Yeah, I think I really want to get something that I could just like a Class C where I could drive it. Right, like and not have to pull it but, and back it and. But you couldn't get up a mountain with that thing. No, you can you can just drive around <laughs> like cousin Eddie. You were you were mentioning uh, we'll wrap up here in a second because I'm getting hungry anyway. But uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll um, you're mentioning Jeff Meldrum, and I was uh-huh. I'm so not I'm so, I was so naive when I first started. I'm not much better now, but I didn't know any of the names, anybody names. I just came in, you know, just asking anybody in the world to come on the show. Right. And I think I reached out to Jeff Meldrum like he was somebody, somebody's friend. Like, hey, I noticed you were in the Bigfoot. Would you like to come on? <laughs> like, <laughs> did, did, what did he say? Nothing. He, I don't think he ever responded. But uh, Joe Rogan did a did a documentary on Bigfoot like 10 years ago. Yeah. And, and uh, I just took down every name that was in that documentary and reached out to him. And Jeff Meldrum asked oh. me one of them. And I didn't, I didn't know then who I was, who I was reaching out to. Right. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's like, a he's a big deal. I've got some people like close to his level that's been on, and I didn't I'd really know who out, they were. I'd reach out to him again. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, I, he, now that I know, yeah, he's he's a he's a he's he seems to be a really nice guy. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of Daniel Lee from the UK? Uh uh-uh. uh fourteen years old and uh, doing uh, research out there in this one ridge that's a mile long in the UK. And he's finding like. Uh, what's it called eDNA huh and he's doing he's getting he got some eDNA off a track that turned out to be an unknown ape and see how many times have you heard that yeah. unknown primate unknown human unknown primate okay you you know why that you know why right, so that tells you right there there is a being that is unknown mm-hmm. and it is a primate do you know why it's unknown? Why it comes up, why this DNA comes up like that? Mm-mm. There's nothing that is documented or substantiated to compare it to. Or to like say this is that. Yeah. There's 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 nothing in the syst- in the DNA system that is okay, this DNA is that. You know, because your DNA tells mm-hmm. you what you are or what kind of thing you are so it it tells you like it'll say that it's a primate but what kind of primate is it It, there Mm -hmm. is no no registration for the kind of primate that it is see that's telling you right there that you you got something 
I was shocked when he told me that. He is 14 years old. His his grand they call him Nans over there, which I think means grandma. Uh-huh. And that's the who goes who goes uh out researching with him. And he is putting on the first annual UK Bigfoot conference and he, he got Jeffrey Meldrum to go. Wow. He he did my show one morning. He goes, I gotta go, uh mate. I got Dr. Meldrum coming on here in a few minutes. I'm like, man, I'm, Jeffrey Meldrum's following me. All right. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm like, I'm just like one degree from Meldrum. Yeah. Which, yeah. Which people who fumble this thing worse than I do have had Ron Moorhead on, so it's not too hard out of the picture. Right. Now I'm gonna tell you that Ron Moorhead Sierra Sounds is absolutely in Incredible to me. Mm-hmm. That is some of my favorite evidence ever. You know, when, whenever I, I I'll be talking to somebody, I say, "You want to know what one sounds like? Listen to this," mm-hmm. and it completely blows their mind. The uh, the guy from Minnesota said he hears him talking out there like that all the time. See, he did like he did like an impression of it. <laughs> something sounds so Tasmanian devil. He said it sounds like the Tasmanian devil's outside. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it was and 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 they're using you know i i, I can't remember the the doctor but there was a research a, a ling a linguist mm-hmm. that they this information was sent to and he t- he was he was talking about they are communicating in a language there's actually syllables that's being mm-hmm. spoken by these things yeah yeah you know i've reached out to him too Cause he was on the Rogan Rogan documentary. Oh really? Yeah. They, he, he, Rogan went to that guy's office. I can't, I, it's not less Odell. Is it? Nah, it's, I'll look it up. I can send you the, it's on YouTube. It's all free now. I don't know if it's supposed to be, but it's a six part uh, series six, uh-huh. know, but it's got uh, aliens, Bigfoot, uh, robot take over the world. Uh, AI. We control the, the, we control the weather. Uh, it's got some, uh, Remote, remote, remote viewing on there. The guys that mend the stare at goats. And I actually got the guy from remote viewing on my show too. Because okay. I happen to be friends with his uh, great nephew by marriage. Yeah. And he was he was one of the men that stare at goats. Stare at you goat. Know, you know, you remember the men that stare at goats? Uh-uh. The uh, remote viewing thing. Um, yeah. He was one of those guys. It was a George Clooney movie. And it was about the secret program, the Ministeric Goats. And he was one of the I've never seen that. Them. Yeah, it's wow. Wild. Do you do you know the guy that was on the trip with us? And you know who it is. I'm not going to mention names, but he has the 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 kick ass land cruiser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he he yeah. was one of them too. Wow. Like I, I think I think they knew each other, but I didn't ask because I'm like, I'm not gonna go drop names around people I just met. Right. Right, but I think they do. His, the, the guy I talked to, his name was Paul Smith, though, and he's he's got a um, remote viewing college in Utah or Idaho. A uh, college? Mm-hmm. It's got like a little course you can go out there for three months. Oh wow, dude, that that stuff's real. When he starts describing what they see, and were you in the military? Uh uh-uh. uh Well, I don't know. I don't know if you know how encryption works, but uh. They do a thing, remote viewing, when they send you on a target. Like if if you're trying to get this group of remote viewers to get a target, in your mind, you associate that target with like a set of numbers. Like he he, he would always, he'd said, eight, his example was 8675309. Uh-huh. He goes, he goes, 8675309 means red car across the country with a certain, with, you know, the cert, a certain object. And, right. would, and he would tell the, the remote viewers about this number. And it would somehow, it's the craziest thing, but they would somehow like figure out via their mind, via the, the person that assigned them the, that number, what it was in some crazy cosmic way. Like it was. Wow. <laughs> dude, it blew that my I did a whole episode with him. I thought, the, I thought he was going to dead fish me because he was so smart. Like sometimes the people that are really smart are bad podcast guests. He was not. I had that to like, stop awesome. him. That is awesome. I had to stop him. <laughs> But that, Man, that, but what you're talking about with the syllables and the the um, Sierra sounds, how he was he was looking through them, how they had words. Yeah, like yeah. 
And then what ruins that for me, the Meldrum thing, is how he's talking back to him. I'm like that. That that that's what that's what gets me going. Cause when he when he um when he it's like he's mocking him. Yeah, he's saying the same like, thing back. Like, and they say it. It seems like that. He he gets it seems like that one gets mad because he goes like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like oh snap. Well, that's I, and that I, shows emotion. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying ruin it's for me, but like uh, I've heard skeptics talk about how it sounds like they're right next to the microphone. I'm like, well, if you knew anything about what you're listening to, you would know that half of it is right next to the microphone. Yeah, and the other yeah. half's across the mountain there. Plus, plus another thing to think about too is. You can actually, if you put it on with headphones, you can hear the distance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you, you can hear where one's closer and one's further away. And the lo- you can almost mm-hmm. hear like the locations of where they are in relation to where the microphone is. Yeah, you can you can tell that one of them's right there because it literally is. He says it. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of them are, you can hear through the, it almost sounds like there's air in between them. Yeah. Yep. Good job, Paul. That is, yeah, that's that's incredible. I'll have to send you that documentary because uh, he several several different people talks about gifting and he goes out there and sees all kinds of stuff and and they obviously don't see anything because it's uh, forty five minutes of a TV show, right? Fifteen years ago, but it's it's got Meldrum in it. It's got uh, man, you know the names. I'm not, I'm not even gonna try to think of them, but I've reached out to all of them and and. Afterwards, I look back. I'm like, my gosh, that dude's got 50 million followers, and I'm just <laughs> <laughs> trying to. You're good. You're going. You're going to get there. You're yeah, I mean, I'm not. There. I, I haven't been intimidated yet by anyone. I mean, what are they going to do? And just tell me the same thing I've heard over and over. Right. Right. I've never heard no. I've heard. Uh, I've heard crickets, and I've heard yes, but I've never heard no. <laughs> <laughs> Some people's like. I had one guy tell me I had to buy a copy of his book and I wasn't, I didn't have enough followers yet, but that was about it. You had to buy a copy of his book. He told me I needed to buy a copy of his book before I came on his show and I didn't have enough followers yet. Wow. For me, for for him to come on my show. And I'm thinking, all right, you're now my mortal enemy, but we'll go forward. (laughs) 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 I kind of just like, like, okay, I'm kind of going to like put a pin in it and, Going forward, I'll wait for the day he has to come on my show. Right, right. And if I get big enough, he will. I mean, that's how it works. But anyway, Tony, you've been a great guest, and uh, I think uh, we will hang out sooner or later again in the physical dimension. Oh, yeah. I you, love being here. A, uh, Thank you for having me. Do you have a website or anything you want to plug? I don't have a website. I just I just got, I got my email address. You know, if somebody want to get in touch with me, it's TonyG389 at gmail.com. Tony G. Yeah, he takes encounters and will help you out. <laughs> you never know. I didn't know. I didn't know what kind of capacity you're in this. I didn't know if it was just hobbyist or just um, I know you were with the with the team there. Well, it's kind of it's kind of um at this moment, it's kind of hobbyist. Uh, yeah, because I had got out of it for a while and then <clears throat> I had got back into it and you know, I'm still, I'm actually, you know, I'm still learning the newer stuff that's out there. You know, I, I you know, I'm kind of old school in the, in a sense, you know, I'm not used to the technology. I'm used to the flashlight and getting out still there. Sniffing the dirt. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like a tornado chaser. <laughs> yeah, it's wild now. It's wild now. I've, I've considered getting on eBay and getting me some Patterson Gimlin level recording devices and. Yeah. And I, because, but at the same time, I don't want to be like a researcher, full blown. I want to be like the combat reporter to paranormal research. Right. I want to be like a Jason. I don't want all my stuff. I want to be next to people that have it. Like having somebody friend <laughs> have a boat. the best boat, somebody else's. Right. Right. Like I'll just go to camp out and eat beanie weenies and run around with them in the woods. And they, they do all the crazy stuff. I'm just taking this. Also, that's pretty much, man, the way, you know, all right, so you got people who are retired, retired military that's able to yep. get out there and spend, you know, weeks to two weeks at a time mm-hmm. on, you know, on an investigation. And cops, and too. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I've always wanted to be able to do that, but 
I, unfortunately, I can't at this at this stage in my life. You know, I'm not saying that I, you know, when the time comes that I wouldn't do that because I sure I sure would be gone for months because that's where you're going to get the greatest amount of evidence, the longevity of you staying mm -hmm. out there. The Just more like if you're out. Yeah. If, if, if you're out there for a month in the same location where these creatures are known to be, you're you're going to have an, an, an encounter. You're going to have mm -hmm. an up close encounter. It's going to be more than one time because they're going to get used to seeing you. You know, they're going to be familiar with you. You know, I would suggest at that level, do not feed them. Do not do nothing like that. Because just like any other wild animal, you start feeding it, it it's going to get aggressive if you mess around mm -hmm. and forget a day. You know. Turn into grizzly man real quick. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what old Zeus Platt out from Zeus Pratt from Colorado told me. He goes, don't feed them. Because everybody wants to give a peanut butter. Why the hell would you give a 3,000 pound gorilla peanut butter every day? <laughs> oh, man. Well, all right, man. It's been a great talk. Uh, thanks for coming on again. And we'll, uh, I'll let you know when this airs and we can drop it and show all our friends. And I'll put it in the big email chain as well. All right. I, I, I appreciate you having me. It's been a pleasure being here. Yeah. I've been looking forward to it. I knew we'd have a good talk. Did not disappoint. I was anytime, excited. I was excited there's a bathroom, too, man. Anytime there's a bathroom break in a, in a podcast, you know it's about to get real. <laughs> Does that mean, it, that mean it's done with long? I've never had a bad post bathroom break conversation. <laughs> it should just it should just be only podcasts where people sit and just just jabber jaw for an hour and a half, and I'll, I got to go to the bathroom, come back, and it's just like okay, real talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, man. I'll I'll see our way out. We're gonna play our exit music and uh, uh, good night and God bless. God bless you too, brother. I never didn't believe in Bigfoot. I never believed in it. I didn't believe in it. I never gave it any thought. They kept wood knocking back and forth to each other, and it was in a pattern. Barn owls don't typically throw rocks. I come across these tracks. Sasquatch is still not on my mind. <laughs> <laughs>